How's it going everybody? You're at the Ferris for Fitness YouTube channel and today I will be discussing pre-workout nutrition. I will first be speaking on the supplementation aspect of pre-workouts and then also the diet aspect of your pre-workout nutrition. So just to get into it, I'm, the supplements I'm going to mention is to kind of be in passing. I'm going to speak about what they do and the dosages a little bit. I'm also going to link a video somewhere up here to a, a longer video made by a different YouTube channel, Lifting for Life, which is one of the few YouTube channels that I actually recommend checking out. I will link that there if anyone wants to get additional information on these certain supplements. I believe he has a very, very similar concoction of supplements that he chooses to take pre-workout. Additionally, I will uh, post a whole bunch of information in the description box below, just studies and things like that, just kind of back up what I'm saying. So again, that can kind of help you uh, if you want to know a little bit more behind the science of how these supplements work. So talk about beta alanine. I swear this about gets to every single one of my videos somehow. So hopefully people can see that. Beta alanine, alanine is an amino acid, but what, uh, what beta alanine is going to do um, is help with muscular endurance. So say if maybe you've only, if you're doing a certain exercise, you've gotten that, you know, for 50 pounds for eight reps, you know, once you have beta alanine, it can maybe help you get a couple more reps at that certain weight. So again, it's gonna help with muscular endurance. There is tons and tons of research on beta alanine. So this is probably the number one supplement that I would say is beneficial pre-workout. And then along with creatine monohydrate, I would say is probably those two supplements used in conjunction are gonna be very, very effective together. Now to get into the dosages of beta alanine, as you see here, it's typically in most studies that I've seen is 3.2 to 6.4 grams. I choose to take about four to five grams, which is about two scoops of the, the serving size that they give you in here. As long as you're not going below 3.2 grams, I would say you should see the effects from it. There's gonna be a little bit of Variance, I would say, of people's opinions as if you need to take it off days as well, similar to creatine monohydrate. I typically do about five grams pre-workout, so I'm lifting weights that day. And then the days that I'm not training, I'll just take like two, uh, two grams of my creatine, so it's a little bit less. Again, you don't, it's kind of your decision if you want to do it that way. I personally think you'll have a little bit of benefit um, making sure it's saturated inside your system as opposed to just taking it on workout days. Again, it's a very, very cheap supplement, so it isn't like you're gonna be wasting a lot of money if it isn't effective. Again, beta alanine, a great pre-workout supplement. I'm going to um, another one very similar in its effects as beta, with beta alanine is citrulline malate. A uh, quick little uh, background on citrulline malate. A lot of people have probably heard of, of L-citrulline before. That's in a lot of commercial pre-workout supplements. Citrulline malate is pretty much the same. The only difference is actually bonded to malic acid to help with the absorption. So I would recommend getting citrulline malate over L-citrulline. Now the research definitely isn't as compelling with citrulline malate as it is with beta alanine, but I still would suggest supplement, supplementing with it pre-workout if you if you would like. It's going to have very similar effects to beta alanine as has been shown to help with muscular endurance. So those two. Uh, supplements working together are going to be very, very beneficial for helping you get through your workout. You should be able to do a little bit more volume than you're, than you're accustomed to, and you should, also, you should also be able to push a few more reps at that certain amount of weight than you're accustomed to. The dosages on here are vary quite a bit. It's usually between about four to eight grams in a lot of the research that I've seen. This is a much more expensive supplement than beta alanine. It's still pretty cheap but I think it's around $20 for 200 grams. So it goes by pretty quick. So I'd recommend staying on the lower end of that if you're, maybe if you don't have a huge budget for supplements. So I usually take about four grams of the citrulline malate. So, so far we have five grams of beta alanine, four grams of citrulline malate. These two supplements here are gonna be kind of in the same category. They are L-tyrosine, this one's L-tyrosine, and this one is acetyl, L-carnitine, you guys can see those. So these, 
the, the main benefit you're going to see from these two supplements right here is going to be a, an improve and it's going to improve your cognitive function. So it's going to help you in the gym feeling more mentally focused for your workout. You're not going to kind of have this weak half-assed workout. So it's really beneficial for that. The you're also going to get a little bit of fat mobilization with the L-carnitine or with the acetyl L-carnitine. Sorry. And then again with the L-tyrosine, it's going to have a little bit more of a, a stimulant effect. I mean, it's not going to be a stimulant as strong as caffeine, but it's going to have similar effects on your body, just not as great. And you're also going to have the, uh, the effects of it without any side effects is what I'll get into with caffeine. So the dosages here, I typically do about 1.5 grams of L-tyrosine and one gram of acetyl L-carnitine. Hopefully you guys can see that the lighting's kind of bad in here, but... Uh, that's what I do there. I actually buy these in powder forms because it's a little bit cheaper. So I kind of have to, you know, when you're only measuring out a gram, it can kind of get kind of tedious with the, the measuring out. So I just choose to do it that way. You can also buy them in 500 milligram capsules, I believe. So that helps it a little bit if you want to be a little bit more accurate with your measurement. Again, 1.5 grams on the tyrosine, 1 gram on the acetyl L-carnitine. Get to the last few here. Um, caffeine, unless you're living under a rock, you probably know what this is. Most people use it, use it not around their workout though, unless you're taking maybe like a commercial pre, a commercial pre-workout. I typically take 200 milligrams of caffeine, but not every workout. So this is really important information. I'd recommend you pay attention. I typically don't tell people to take caffeine every single workout, and it's going to vary with how many times you work out in a week, but I typically only take it twice a week, and I take it on my upper body days because my upper body is a kind of a laggy body part for me. I definitely take it on my bench press chest kind of a day, so I recommend not to take it every day, but to take it on the days that you're working your lagging body parts. So if that's legs for you and you're working your legs twice a week, you know, take your caffeine on your leg day. Taking it every single day is going to kind of be ineffective because the more you take something like caffeine, the less effective it's going to be every single time. So if you take a person who, who drinks no diet soda and no caffeine and no coffee, whatever, and you give them you know 200, mill 200 milligrams of caffeine, again, it's going to be some kind of genetic variance with how you're going to respond, but most likely that's going to give them a pretty significant boost in athletic performance and whatever you're doing. But if you take a person who's drinking coffee every day and a diet soda every day and they're just, they usually have four or 500 milligrams every single day of caffeine and they take a caffeine pill before their workout, it's not gonna do a lot because you're pretty much addicted to caffeine and at this point you're just using it to be stable. You know, there's a lot of research on caffeine that shows if you consume it enough, you'll, you won't necessarily become addicted like you wanna go kill someone for it, but you come addicted to the sense that Caffeine is going to help you if you if you use it, you know, kind of in moderation, taking you to a next level of energy, mental awareness and all of those things. And then if you take caffeine religiously, what has been shown is that it, the, the benefits just kind of level off. And then if you don't take caffeine, your, your performance and your mental awareness actually drops. So you actually need that caffeine just to get back, just to get back to baseline. So that's a little bit more information that I wanted to get into with an with, uh, individual supplement, but I think it's really important with caffeine. It's just a widely abused um, nutrient in the Western world. So again, take that, not every single workout, but I recommend taking it on workouts. You need that extra boost or you need that, that body part um, to come up, assuming that you're you know bulking or trying to put on mass, right? And then lastly, what I mix it with, it's just simple Gatorade powder. I don't even include it in my macronutrients. I usually, I usually do just about uh, 10 to 15 grams, which is about 15 grams of carbohydrates. But all you're gonna do with that or crystal light, just kind of whatever I'm feeling. There is some kind of anecdotal evidence with uh, having a little bit of sugar around your workout can kind of get you going. I'm not gonna put a, a huge stock in that though. I mainly just use it for taste. So th those are the um, those are the supplements that I choose to take pre-workout. Again, I'll just kind of wrap it up. Five grams of beta alanine, four grams of citrulline malate, 1.5 grams of L-tyrosine, one gram of acetyl L-carnitine, 
and 200 milligrams of caffeine on my upper body days because it's, a, it's my lagging body part and then no stimulants on my uh, lower body days, right? So those are the supplements, guys. And I'm just gonna I had to actually cut my pre-workout video into two parts. The second part is actually me talking about some basic information that you should know about pre-workout nutrition as far as when to eat and when to take your pre-workout supplements. So I suggest you go and watch part two of the video. I will link that right here. Sorry, my videos can't go over 15 minutes right now, but there will be some additional information on pre-workout nutrition that I think should be beneficial. I want to thank you guys for the support like always and go check out part two of the video.